Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to review the new Longer B1 30V laser engraver. Without further ado, let's get into it. After updating the power to the original Longer Ray 5 up to the 20W model, Longer has finally released the second machine with a new look, more functionalities and a higher power. The first model was pretty capable in terms of performance and longevity, in fact I've been using the 20 watt version for a very long time and it never let me down, so I expect this machine to surpass that. And just a quick spoiler, I'm impressed. This is a 450 x 440 mm industrial grade desktop laser engraver with a pleasing design, built in air assist control, a mobile app, offline control and a powerful laser module. Now, before getting any further, just a quick note, I received this machine free of charge with a request to review it, however, I'm not being paid by Longer, neither any one of its affiliate, and as usual, I like to keep my video reviews unbiased, therefore, all of the opinion that you're about to hear in this video, they represent my honest opinion about this machine, and as a such, I'm going to also tell you what I like and what I don't like. So, with this out of the way, let's keep going. As usually, I break down my video reviews into different sections, so have a look in the timeline below and if you want, you can jump to the section of your interest as you please. Starting with the assembly, the machine comes partially uh, pre-assembled with five framing components ready, with the wiring harness uh, pre-routed into the profiles and putting all the pieces together is relatively simple and quick. Now, I do suggest laying down all the profiles in the correct position and orientation then, after sliding uh, the gantry as per instruction, you can work out the main profile corner by corner by sliding them together and screwing the total of eight fasteners. Finally, you need to install the Y-axis timing belt. Now, this doesn't look simple at first, but it is. There is a little bit of space between the profile and the pulley, which allow you to wrap the belt by simply creating a loop and forcing it to pass in between. Now, for a non-instruction person like me, I had to find out the hard way. However, I then realized that the instruction manual has a call-out detail explaining exactly how to go about it. Last but not least, plug in the electrical connectors, which is straightforward, and you're good to go. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes to get up and running. The machine has a cool design and the color is nice. However, the finishing makes every speck of dust super visible. The frame is entirely custom designed with proprietary profiles, but it uses standard roller for both the X and the Y axis. The machine is stiff and square out of the box and doesn't need any adjustment. The only thing to look for is that the two Y axis run parallel by correctly installing the timing belts. The machine sits on threaded rubber feet that offer a little bit of adjustment, and you can upgrade to taller one if you need to work with a roller tool. The machine comes with a bunch of features, starting with a built-in air assist control and included air pump. This will allow you to make link cuts from your first project. The pump is standard and it has no variable flow rate or filter, but it's both quiet and effective. The machine has a built-in offline control function which can be used with the touchscreen display, which is sold separately or through a wireless web or mobile app. This will allow you to work offline with SD card without a PC connection. The laser module is built in clearance rod, which makes the height adjustment hassle free. Finally, a bunch of safety features, including a tilt and fire protection, an emergency button, and a lockout switch. The machine is offered in three different power variations 20, 30, and 40 watt. The one I got came with a fixed focus 6 diode laser module with a rated optical power output of 33 to 36 watts and the power performance is astonishing more on that later the module has a standard design with a powerful and effective top fan which is necessary to keep the six diodes cool and is built in clearance route the module mounts on a standard sliding clamp with two setting knobs located on the right side the adjustment of the height is straightforward all you need to do is to swing down the clearance route loosen the knobs, lower the module, and tighten the knob back, and then, of course, swing back the clearance rod so that is out of the way. The lens maintenance is also quite simple, as all you need to do is to unscrew the metal pipe, loosen the set screw on the side of the nozzle using the provided X key, and you're good to go. Clean the lens and close again. 
In addition, in the package you will also find a replacement lens. As for the accessories, the machine comes with a few testing pieces, a brush, a pair of tweezers, an SD card and a stick reader. Alright, let's now get into the capabilities. As usual, I run my testing to assess the performance of the machine using the most common material. For the testing, I run the machine using the air pump which is included in the package so that you know exactly what to expect. Going ahead with the testing, cutting at 3mm or 1 8 of an inch birch plywood, it goes cleanly at a whopping 750mm per minute, 95% power. You could go as fast as 800mm per minute, but you would end up with stringing on the back side. I would conservatively go to no more than 600 to 650 millimeters per minute for a good and consistent result each time. 6 mm plywood, clean cut at 350 millimeters per minute, 95% power. 3 mm HDF, which is harder than MDF, it maxes out my testing at a speed of 700 millimeters per minute, 90% power. 3 mm laminated HDF, good results at 800 mm per minute, 95% power. 3 mm gray board, the same material used for food packaging, maxed out my test at 800 mm per minute, 90% in power. 3.2 mm acrylic, 400 mm per minute, 90% in a single pass. Now, I guess it could have gone up to 450, however, the 450 was not in my test. 1.5 mm coated ABS, 1,500 mm per minute, 90% power in a single pass. As for the curve, I performed a simple fit test to find the right curve offset to get pieces to stack together, and on a 3 mm laminated HDF, it averages minus 0.1 to minus 0.125 for both the horizontal and vertical slots. As for the maximum depth, setting the height of the module to the minimum possible, I was able to go through about 28 mm of pine wood in two passes at 100 mm per minute, 100% power. Single pass with the same parameter cuts about 22 mm. Now, I believe I could go deeper, but I didn't have a thicker timbers to test with me. Let's now see how it performs with engraving. On birch plywood, as you can see, produces visible results all the way up to machine top speed of 36,000 mm per minute. So you need to choose the color tone you like and to go for it. However, in my opinion, beyond the 20 and 24,000 uh, mm speed, the engraving does not change that much. With MDF, you get similar results to the plywood with visible engraving at machine top speed. I then tackled some real projects and they all turned out well. This is the third 30 watt six diodes machine I've tested so far, and I was impressed with the power. It completely surpassed the competition by a good 20 to 30 percent. I feel like we are starting to get closer to a CO2 counterpart. Besides, it makes me doubt at this point if the other 30 watt machines I tested, they truly have six diodes inside. Because if it is, then it means that either the diodes or the uh, optics is not of the best quality. In the project I cut, cuttings were good and consistent from the first to the last without visible sign of power drops. All right, let me now tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved, starting with the pros. The laser module is powerful, and at the moment it beats other 30 watt machines in the market. The machine is bigger than other laser engravers, offering a size of 450 times 140 millimeters, which corresponds to an area about 24% bigger than other machines. In my experience, although most projects are in the order of 300 times 300 millimeters, there are times when you get order for stuff that is a little bit bigger than 400 times 400. And so it is good that you're going to have this extra uh, centimeters both in the horizontal and in the vertical uh, so that you don't have to uh, buy an extension kit or to switch to a bigger machine in order to tackle certain projects. This obviously comes with the drawback that the machine has a slightly bigger footprint. So uh, if space is your concern, then you should keep that in mind. Then it comes with a quiet air pump and it is built in air assist control. The module is built with clearance rod for easy adjustment and single-handed operation. 
you get an offline function with app control and if you like to have a screen you can go ahead and buy it separately. The price is good for what I can see at the moment compared to other Teriva laser engravers. Now stuff that I think it should be improved, the fan runs constantly while idling. Now this is most probably done for cooling or pre-cooling purposes but pre-cooling and cooling can be handled with a different strategy and keep the fan quiet while idling. The height adjustment knobs are very small and the upper one doesn't even have enough space for you to put your finger. So if you happen to have uh, big fingers or if you're a woman and you happen to have nails, that is going to be hard to do. Luckily, the lower knobs is sufficient to hold the module and so I found myself operating only the lower one. All right, what I didn't like. The fan is extremely loud and it runs constantly. And I believe that there are quieter fans out there that can be used for the purpose. The eye protection shield is great for eye protection. However, the mirror finish makes it particularly difficult for you to see through while framing, especially if you have uh, some uh, lightning source just behind you. Let me now tell you whether you should uh, buy it, consider it or discard it. Now, considering the pros and the cons I've discussed, especially the performance, the power and the size, I would buy it right away. All right, and this is pretty much all. I hope you found my video helpful, informative. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the thumb up button below. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now.